Hi, it's Dwyer, richarddwyer.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Well, it's two days before Thanksgiving, right? Let me offer a warning up front. I'm not a medical doctor. I don't have a psychology degree. I have very little formal education in what I'm about to discuss. But in the real world, right, um, I'm guessing I'm not alone in having come across people who you start to figure out are narcissists. What do I mean by a narcissist? I mean someone who's just obsessed for whatever reason, whatever the context, with having power, control, and attention. Right? They're just obsessed with it. And they have very little empathy for the people around them, including you and me. Now, there are some great videos online from people like Sam Vaknin that have been very helpful, very informative to me personally, right? What this video is, is just me sharing my strategies on dealing with narcissists over the holidays. I know this video is on the eve of Thanksgiving, and I know many of you might be thinking about, let's say, that member of your family who you sense is obsessed with power, control, and attention, who doesn't seem to have as their motivation right the greatest good for the greatest number making it a party for all involved creating a halloween excuse me a thanksgiving or a christmas that's fun for everyone well let's talk about our strategy which stems from a basic understanding right just understand that narcissism in my opinion is an addiction right it to me is no different in terms of the outcomes than someone being addicted to cocaine right or alcohol the person can't help themselves you know they're there they might even be a little bit conscious of the fact that they lack empathy for the people around them. They might say to themselves, you know what, I need to monitor my behavior. I need to regulate my behavior. But then they have a relapse. Right? What's going on around them is just too much of an opportunity. Thanksgiving only comes one time a year. This is their opportunity to gain power and control of a holiday that doesn't happen that often in front of a hostile, excuse me, hostage crowd, right? A captive crowd. So what I want you to remember here, at least in my opinion, based on years of being around some narcissists is that narcissism really is an addiction. The person is sick, right? They're going to relapse. They can't help themselves, right? Don't go by how good things could be in theory. I believe you need to look at things as they are. Either your Thanksgiving is really taking place or it's not taking place, right? Look at what's happening around you. The narcissist in the family has an illness. Let me make a second point. 
You know, it takes a lot to be a narcissist. It really does. It, it takes a lot to create the dysfunction, right? Narcissists, sometimes you'll notice they're tired a lot of the time because it takes a lot of energy for them to plan their narcissism, right? It's not spontaneous all the time. Most of the time, their narcissism is rehearsed. So if you have a narcissist in your family, you'll notice that they've planned the dysfunction. They've planned the last minute surprise. They have planned it so much that they've invested time and effort in making alliances with facilitators to help them create the circumstances where they can be narcissistic. Right now, the facilitators might be just some innocents, some useful idiots, to use a phrase of Nassim Taleb's, right, a great philosopher. Worst case, the facilitators are narcissists themselves, right? If you're in a group setting, if you've been on a college campus and hung around for a period of time, you might notice there's certain groups who are so self-focused, so self-interested, so unempathetic, that you understand there's a problem there, right? You might notice crime shows on channels like ID and Oxygen, where you have two narcissists getting together and going on crime sprees, right? I'm just telling you, you need to look around and you'll notice that the narcissist and the family is creating alliances through, it could be, misinformation. Maybe the facilitator has been lied to, right? Maybe the, you know, political campaign the narcissist is waging isn't being viewed as such by a facilitator who just doesn't have the information. Or worst case, maybe the facilitator themselves is getting some kind of payoff some kind of power, control, and attention themselves by associating themselves with the narcissist, right? Let me make a third point too. You heard me talk about narcissism being an addiction. Just understand, in many ways it's worse than being around a coquette. right? If you have a family member who's in rehab you can do things to make sure there's no cocaine around during Thanksgiving, right? If you have a family member who's a heroin addict or an alcoholic, you can make sure that the Thanksgiving get together doesn't have any heroin or alcohol within arm's reach. You can do things to try to help the person with their addiction. But understand that that's impossible with a narcissist because the narcissist is addicted to attention. And when the family gets together, right, over the holidays, the attention is all around. So someone who's an attention hog, who's going to try to tilt the holiday so that all eyes are on them, Right? They're not going to be able to help themselves. You're not going to be able to help them. Right? So, let's talk about strategies. Now, you have a narcissist in the family. Right? You're aware of it. You've dealt with them long enough where you know they're going to be dysfunctional. They're going to create some crisis. They're going to insist on some level of control 
when the get together should be egalitarian it should be democratic right when people should actually be able to just openly talk about what they'd like to do right I can tell you I've been in groups where we couldn't even talk about what movie we wanted to watch on TV because the narcissist only wanted to watch their movie and even though there were many people in the room who the majority wanted to watch something else would have been more fun right you know would have satisfied people's preferences more we had to deal with the narcissist who was doing things like hiding the TV remote and not talking you know, changing the channel when you went to the bathroom and stuff like that. So, here are some rules. The first rule for dealing with the narcissist over the holidays is not to be the host of the party. Right? You really cannot be the host of the party. If you're a visitor and the scene gets to be preposterous, Right? The narcissist has a relapse, and then it's about power, control, and attention. Right? And the narcissist has a lack of empathy for everyone else. If you're a visitor, you can leave. You really can't leave when it's your house. When the other people who are being victimized by the narcissist are your guests. Right? You can't leave. So, you need to think this through beforehand and realize that you can't be the host of the party. Right? Understand the way things go, too. Some people will say, you know what? Well, I want to host. I just won't invite the narcissist. You know how this plays out politically, don't you? One of the people you invite is going to be a facilitator of the narcissist. Word's going to get back to the narcissist. Right? The narcissist almost hopes you don't invite them because then it gets to be some kind of public spectacle. You invited everyone but the narcissist. Or worse yet, some facilitator brings the narcissist to the party anyway. Says, oh, I didn't know. I didn't know you didn't invite so-and-so because that facilitator might have their own agenda. In my opinion, you don't need the political overhang. Just don't host. Right, the uh, second point I want to make is when you go to the family get-together at somebody else's place, make sure you have your own transportation. Don't be beholden to your lift. Right, because the problem is you're going to be there. The narcissist is going to be, figuratively speaking, setting the event on fire. Right? Trying to create some kind of bad memory for everyone because the narcissist just wants to control the memory. They don't care if it's a good or a bad memory. Right? And so you always need a way to the exit. You always need your own transportation. So that friend you love, who says, hey man, I, I can drive us, blah, blah, blah. Even though you're tight with that person and you enjoy being in the car with that person, think ahead. You need to say, hey, you know, Keisha, love you, but I'm going to drive my own car. I don't care what parking costs. That cost is going to be well worth the price if you need to bail on a bad narcissistic performance by some narcissist during your Thanksgiving dinner. Right? Let me say this too. Right? If the narcissist invites you to their party, right? If the narcissist is hoping, is holding the family dinner, right? Because again, the narcissist is going to want power and control. What better way to do so than to be the host? In my opinion, you really can't 
this it. Certainly not for dinner. Maybe after dinner. Right? Maybe for a short period of time. But not during dinner. Right? Why? Because the narcissist has too much power and control. Don't be surprised, too, if you say, hey, I can't make it for dinner because I promised Keisha I'd eat with her, but, but, I'll make it after dinner to watch that last football game. Don't be surprised if when you show up, friends are saying, man, I can't believe what happened. Oh, my God, that was awful and stuff. If you walk into that scene, buddy, make sure you have an excuse ready to get out of there in 10 minutes. Because then that'll just validate your worst fears. Right? Thanksgiving was just a ruse for this narcissist to do something dumb and stupid and, you know, memorable. Just to get attention and to be talked about. Right? Let me say this too. With regard to interfacing with narcissists. You always want to meet in a public place. With other people present. Right? You meet with a narcissist by yourself and you just become a pawn. You just become someone they can lie about in other conversations to gain power and control and attention. Right? Understand the narcissist is sick. They really lack empathy. They really don't care about your health, welfare, or reputation. So you can't meet with the narcissist by yourself. You need other people present. Right? And you want it to be a public place. Why? Let's use a meal as an example. Right? If you meet at a restaurant, Everyone gets to order what they want off the menu. The narcissist doesn't get an opportunity to try to control what you eat, what's being served. Right? Also, there's only so much the narcissist can do. You know, if they're at your party and you serve food, the narcissist is going to claim that the food's awful or that the recipe was their idea. You already know that. But at a restaurant, you're not the cook. You're not responsible. If the narcissist tries to create some kind of you know, scandal or issue about the food or the service, you didn't prepare the food. You're not the one serving the food. Right? Why the other people are there because that actually gives you people to talk with who you care about, who actually care about you back. So if the narcissist starts to make up lies about what happened at your meeting with them, you have other witnesses who can privately save your reputation by telling friends, you know, I was there and I didn't see that happen. Right? So, in my opinion, again, if you have a narcissist in your family and you know the person's bad news and lacks empathy toward you, you always need to meet them in a public place with other people present. Let me have another suggestion here. Right? And I see we're 19 minutes in. I apologize for the length of this video. But when you're meeting in a group and you know someone's a narcissist, you know they're trying desperately to gain control of the proceeding and to have all eyes on them. You need to make sure that whatever is going on, right? Because, you know, narcissists will make some crazy statement, right? They'll want to talk about some person they're dating for the entire conversation, even though there are five people present. What you need to do is to make sure that everyone gets equal time. So while the narcissist is talking about the latest 
thing that deserves everyone's attention in their life, you need to make sure that the other people at the table get a chance to be heard. Because I believe in karma. They'll then make sure that you have a chance to be heard. Right? It'll be a group get-together where you actually get a chance to enjoy your friends. And your friends will be relieved too because they'll have a chance to enjoy you. The last thing you want is for everyone to be focused on whatever buffoonery the narcissist is selling at the event. Right? Because you know the narcissists, their payoff is just the attention. They're going to have some means to get that attention. Right? You know, um, you know, my girl, she's awful. Um, oh, you won't believe what happened to me at work or whatever, whatever the story is. Right? You need to make sure that other friends receive friendship at the event. Right? In addition, let me say this about narcissists, um, about dealing with narcissists. Don't complain about them. Right? Don't complain. Don't publicly comment on the narcissism to anyone. Because what I've found is that when you have someone in your social circle who's obsessed with power, control, and attention, other people already know there's something wrong with that person. Right? You don't have to publicly acknowledge it. Other people already know. Let me go one step further too. The facilitators who are facilitating this person's narcissism, right? They're already so invested in the cover story, right? Whatever the narrative is to justify the person's narcissism that you aren't going to sway them in any event, right? So when you realize that someone is a narcissist and they're hell-bent on destroying Thanksgiving, right? Getting attention at Thanksgiving is more important to them than spreading goodwill and making sure everyone else enjoys the holiday. Right? When you're dealing with that person, your best bet is to take action by not putting yourself in that situation. And if you're forced to be in that situation, right, having your own transportation and having other people there meeting in a public place, that's how your time should be spent rather than trying to alert everyone to the fact that there's a narcissist among you who lacks empathy and who's going to do things to destroy the holiday season. Right? Let me add two final caveats. If you're at an event and someone's dysfunctional, they're hell-bent on destroying somebody else. Maybe it's their wife or husband, right? Or whatever, um, some other person in the social group. And let's say they're, they're being nasty and horrible, right? My recommendation, no matter where you are in the meal, is to leave, right? Do so diplomatically. We all have cell phones. You can get up, use the bathroom, come back, say, hey, I just got a call. I need to uh, leave here family emergency, whatever the reason, right? But there is no need to hang around dysfunctional scenes. You're trying to enjoy yourself over the holidays. You're trying to create good memories for yourself and the people around you, right? If the event you're in is just creating a bad memory, what's the point? Life is too short. Let me close, too, with this one. If you're around a narcissist, bring cash. 
right? Have cash. Don't be in a scene where there's a group and you know the way narcissists play it, right? They just want attention, any means necessary. You know, they don't care about you and stuff. So you start hearing nonsense stories about how money's too tight to mention, right? Their check from work, um, you know, they're not sure if it cashed, if it's in their account. Right, uh, they've been a victim of identity theft and can't access their account. Or for some reason, they don't have their ATM card on them or, you know, uh, they only bought a credit card with them, right? Whatever, whatever the rules, just make sure that you don't have to take out your credit card to pay for anything that you have the cash to pay for your portion of the meal and a tip for the waiter, right? If your friend Keisha is there and Keisha says, hey, I'll pay for it, you can take out your cash and give it to Keisha, right? Everyone will see you've paid for your portion of the meal, right? Everyone will see it. But if you are just there with a credit card and you're with a really bad narcissist who is gonna at the last minute try to shift the focus of who pays or you know whatever is gonna say dumb things like I'm not paying for this meal my steak was undercooked right I was once out with someone and she said you know, I don't want to pay for this meal because the waitress had dirt under her fingernails, right? If you're with someone who's that lost, just make sure you have cash so you can take out the cash and you can pay for your portion of the meal, right? Don't even get involved in the other side's narrative, right? If you're there and the narcissist calls over management and, you know, wants to create a scene and stuff like that, really just to get attention, right? Just to get their equivalent of heroin, right? Just make sure that you're uninvolved with their narrative. You know, you didn't pay attention to anyone's fingernails or anything. As far as you know, your food was good. Uh, by the way, here is my portion of the bill. You're anonymous, right? You're, they're not running your credit card with your name and credit card number, right? You don't have to worry about them running your credit card then trying to bill you for your friend's meal. No, no, no. You've paid cash. They've been paid. You've received the food. Time to leave in your own transportation. Anyway, those are my tips. That's how I see it, right? Um, let me hear from you. I hope you leave your tips and your insight in the comment section to this video. Happy holidays. I hope everyone watching this video, video has a very happy Thanksgiving. Thanks for stopping by.